false numbers that mean nothing on their own. So we will do try and interpret those for you. So, the, so things like BMI we're familiar with, the road of um, garbage and honesty from an athletic point of view, but it doesn't really tell you much, it's not specific enough to really give you um, a lot of information on your body composition. Um, I use a version of that called the RPI, and that, that, that looks a similar scenario, but I'm, what I'm doing, doing is I'm calculating impact forces that you exert on the ground from a running point of view, especially, and do you have enough muscle to counteract that? Okay. The higher the score, the better. So if you're above by 41, good to go. You're saying I'm almost a 44. So from a running point of view, I don't expect any impact related running okay. with the exception of if there's a big asymmetry between left and right, then maybe there's a more of a risk on, on the weaker side, for example. Yeah. But on the whole, you should be fine. How much fat have I put on in the last five years? <laughs> um, body fat currently 18.7. Anywhere between 18 to 22 is healthy, but from a performance point of view, you want to get it lower, but not too low. 8% is starting to run into health risk territory. Yeah. So you know, typically we've got to look at where you are. What I normally use, I come in and I'll say, right, let's set a target of, say, 16%. First, first port of call. Get three greens. <laughs> Everything's good to go. So uh, typically, that's what I look at with an athlete. So in terms of total mass, are you within your normal range? So if that's green, I'm happy. If your fat mass is between 18 and 22, green light, happy. If your muscle's between 52 and high in fat, anything above 52, I'm happy. Are three, three batches of tissue effectively and how they're going to respond to or be involved in training. So in the blue you've got endomorphy and that is something I describe as the activity pattern or activity level of your fat metabolism. So you've got a high score with a blue, one is low, seven is high, so 4.6 is moderate, moderate to high. So if you train well and you eat well, what happens? You burn. Yeah. You drop fat quite quickly. On the converse, if you decide to take a break from training, eat badly, train badly, you know, high stress levels and stuff like that, your body will tend to respond by adding body fat. Mm. I think you agree with it. Yeah. So it's a little like, almost like a genetic blueprint. What does yes. your body like to do? Second characteristic is mesomorphy, which is the muscular tissue, like the skeletal muscle. So will you be a high responder or a low responder to um, resistance training, strength work and that kind of thing? If you score 1.4, you probably go to the gym and nothing happened. You might get stronger, but in terms of bulking, you probably really struggle with it. And then the green is connective tissue. And you know, part of connective tissue is uh, the link between brain and muscle. So we look at neural control patterns and stuff like that as well. So a big chunk of green, you also may tend to have good levels of efficiency, good levels of coordination. So a typical Kenyan, Ethiopian long distance runner, they tend to have quite high scores on, on ectomorphy. Um, and what they have is these tiny little muscles that are perfectly controlled. Yeah. Now, compared to the general population up here, where you've got a tiny little sliver of green, your big problem there is you've got a little bit too much fat because you haven't been exercising. You've got good muscle, can bulk up quite quickly, but you've got very poor control of the muscle. So if I look at you as an athlete, well, what, do, what do we focus on from a training point of view? Definitely on fat metabolism, maximize your fat metabolism. We do need to lose fat should be very easy if you do the right types of training. Mm. So my IMTG type stuff, the low heart rate zone two, some people call it, and just focusing on metabolizing fat and burning fat and preserving muscle. With you, from a muscle point of view, muscle's good, but we need to look after it. Let's not do things that are gonna chew up muscle unnecessarily. So extreme endurance type training, and not gonna be in our bag of tricks. You know, protein metabolism is very important, so you need to have protein in the diet because you want to spare muscle as much as possible. Yeah. And, and from a strength point of view, why would we be wasting our gym time doing resistance training? So get away from the, the iron plates and machines. You, you're not going to benefit from that. So spend a lot more time on your strength, which is around proprioception and coordination. A lot of balance work and coordination-based training, proprioceptive work, that's what we'll focus on.